Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECMWF Ensemble, uh, 38 Ensemble forecast for today's uh, first video. So it's going to take us through most of November at the Hungarian uh, Met Office uh, for this. So it's a regular Tuesday feature where we uh, have a look at the ECMWF 30 day ensembles. In terms of temperature and precipitation, we can't show you um, mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar heights, unfortunately, yet. I think they, that uh, w information will become available uh, in the coming uh, months and years, but at the moment, just temperature and precipitation. But uh, you can get a rough idea of what patterns are going to be doing uh, anyway from these uh, temperature and precipitation anomalies. So that's what we're going to do uh, for uh, our first video, having a look at the e 30 day on top forecast for UK and for Europe as well. Uh, and then coming up this afternoon on the homepage, uh, we'll have your uh, regular week to 10 day video update. So um, without further ado, we'll get on. I think these are broken down into weekly pairs. The first weekly pair will take us uh, from the 29th of October through to the uh, 4th of November. This updated uh, overnight, of course. So you see a real east-west split across uh, Europe in the uh, in the week ahead. So much much um, warmer than average over in the east and the southeast of uh, Europe. You'll see these sort of uh, orange and even bright red colours just here. They are temperature anomalies of going up to ten degrees above average, eight to ten degrees above average down. Uh, through sort of southern parts of Poland and going down into uh, the Balkans. Those areas are much, much more than average, uh, indeed, real Indian summer type conditions going on there. But out in the west of Europe, it's much colder. So Scandinavia is kind of like coming out uh, close to average across most parts of Scandinavia. It's a little bit cooler than average, actually, across the south of Norway, a little bit warmer than average across eastern parts of Sweden. And then we go over the Baltic into those sort of Baltic countries like Finland, and then we see the uh, temperature anomaly is solidly above average. But out in the west, so for the UK and for Ireland, we're coming out with a cooler than average week. Temperature anomalies somewhere between around 1 to uh, 3 degrees below average. Much of France also coming out colder than average. And Spain and Portugal also for, uh, forecast to be colder than average as well. And even down into parts of North Africa uh, as well. Real east-west split through the Med as well. So this uh, sort of divide between the east and the west of Europe uh, runs from Scandinavia right way down into the central part of the Mediterranean. So anywhere from like Italy eastwards uh, over the Adriatic into the Balkans and down into the southeast Europe, Greece, Turkey, all those areas are forecast have a warmer than average week in the week ahead. But anywhere to the west of Italy, so Corsica, Sardinia, and over to the holiday islands of uh, Mallorca, Minorca, and Ibiza uh, in the Balearics and down to Spain and Portugal, uh, we find that we've got colder than average temperature anomalies there, so a very stark uh, east-west split in the week ahead. Real mixed bag for precipitation as well, so I think we can basically say that many of these eastern parts of Europe where it's warmest, it's also pretty dry as well, a lot of dry weather going on through those eastern and down into southeastern parts of Europe. However, there is one exception, and that's on the Asiatic coast of uh, the Balkans, just here it is uh, a lot wetter and average just there, and Italy coming out with an exceptionally wet week as well, and that does stretch up into the Alpine regions as well, northern Italy, southern parts of France. Uh, so the Alpine regions also much, much wetter than average. Of course, a lot of that is going to be uh, snow. Wetter than average through this central basin of the Mediterranean and then near normal precipitation uh, through Spain and Portugal. We go further north into France, quite a bit of wet weather uh, through there. UK and Ireland forecast to be close to average with precipitation, but interestingly it's a little bit wetter in the eastern part over towards the North Sea, a little bit drier up to the north and northwest of Scotland. Germany, Poland, and men anywhere east of that, generally a little bit on the drier than average side. Up to Scandinavia, we find that, uh, well, western parts of Norway are coming out drier than average. Eastern, southeast parts of Norway a bit wetter than average. And then Sweden also comes out with above average precipitation. A lot of that is going to be uh, snow, again, of course, particularly over mountainous regions. 
Then we go through to week two, and this one takes us from the 5th through to the 11th of November. And again, a bit of an east-west split, but what we see is that the cold and average temperature levels are beginning to fade out towards the west. So for the for the UK and for Ireland, we're, all, we're uh, once again also forecast to be uh, on the cool of an average side. Not as cold as it is in week one, but also still a little bit below average with those temperature levels, especially for Ireland. Down across France, an east-west split. So western parts of France close to average, eastern parts of France getting warm than average. Spain and Portugal uh, still forecast to have a colder than average a week with below average temperatures. But pretty much everywhere else, so kind of like from eastern France uh, eastwards, everywhere else is forecast to have a warmer than average week in this week from the 5th through to the 11th of November. Particularly warm again, or warmer than average again, from uh, sort of western Russia and then going down into these eastern parts of uh, Europe, really from the Black Sea over towards kind of like Poland. Those areas are forecast again to be three, three to six degrees above average. Through the Mediterranean, east-west split continues. Western parts of the Mediterranean forecast to be cooler than average. Eastern parts of the Mediterranean tie in with this warmth that we've got in the east and the northeast of Europe. So there, the temperature anomaly is above average. Precipitation-wise, we look like that in week two, from the 5th through to the 11th of November. So again, lots of dry weather across many central and eastern parts of Europe. Therefore, I think we can say we have probably got quite a big ridge sitting across the east. Bear in mind, although the model is going for above average temperatures across much of central and eastern Europe, uh, in this week, and technically they will be above average in terms of the upper air temperature, because it's November, if skies are clear, you're going to fog up very quickly. So if you get fog across a continental landmass and frost, temperatures will, and night frost, temperatures will very quickly cool down. So you can't necessarily take... Uh, take those temperatures all that seriously under high pressure in uh, sort of late autumn and through to winter. That's always something you have to bear in mind about high pressure conditions over a continental landmass in um, in, the, in the winter. But it won't be true Arctic or Siberian uh, type air. So it won't be a lot of snow, but it could be pretty cold from frost and fog if you start getting inversion conditions, which are very likely over the continent if you've got high pressure taking place. Now to the west, it's a more unsettled scene. So for the UK, for Ireland, again, forecast to have rather above average precipitation this week from the 5th to the 11th of November. France also a little bit above average with precipitation. Spain, Portugal, uh, above average precipitation there. Still rather unsettled through much of the Med and over to Italy, actually, but it's not as wet as it is in week one across Italy when we really do see some exceptionally uh, wet conditions. Southeastern parts of Europe, Greece, Turkey, a little bit drier than average up there, up towards Scandinavia, a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, Norway looks rather dry. Sweden looks rather more unsettled in week, uh, in week two. Then we go through to week three. This one takes us from the 12th through to the 18th of November. And means warmer than average temperature anomalies or milder than average temperature, temperature anomalies are then covering most parts of Europe, uh, Europe. So the colder than average temperature anomalies are faded away. They're basically restricted down towards the far southwest. So Spain, Portugal and northern parts of Africa are still forecast to be a little bit on the cooler than average side there. But otherwise, most parts of Europe have turned uh, milder than average. So a pretty mild week coming up through this middle part of November, if the ECMDF is right. The UK and Ireland has above average temperature anomalies. Most parts of Central Europe, from France over towards the east, generally coming out um, with uh, warmer than average or milder than average temperature anomalies. And northern Europe also... Uh, Scandinavia, uh, and then down towards those Baltic states. Those areas, again, are coming out with a milder than average temperature anomaly. So it's also a pretty mild week uh, this week. Much of the Med is also warming up as well. So, uh, yeah, it looks like that one is a milder week through the middle of uh, November. And pretty dry as well. We do see, not by this point, the signal for temperature, and particularly precipitation, is weakening. But uh, we do see here that uh, most parts of uh, Central and Northern Europe, anyway, are on the, uh, on the dry of an average side. So really from the UK and Ireland in the west over towards the Russian border, many parts uh, in between as well.
well, our forecast you have drier than average precipitation anomalies in this week, telling us that high pressure is likely to be dominating. I think that high pressure will be building in from the east. So we've got the high pressure in week two, uh, sat across central and the east parts of Europe. I think that just becomes more expansive across Europe as we go through into uh, week three and uh, uh, probably bringing in sort of uh, wind direction from that kind of direction, kind of like southerly, southeasterly flow. Bear in mind, again, under high pressure, you can get frost and fog, especially at this time of year. So that would make that would mean the temperatures are a lot uh, cooler than the model is suggesting. Down through the Mediterranean, so still sort of a suggestion that we've got these heavy showers or thunderstorms around the central basin of the Med. But again, the trend is towards drier conditions, particularly from uh, week one. Much of Scandinavia also coming out with a uh, drier than average precipitation anomaly this week. And then we're through to week four. It takes us from the 19th through to the 25th of November. So going towards the end of the month. And signs that things are turning colder in this week, particularly in the uh, west of Europe. So the UK and Ireland, which is Germany, uh, Belgium, Holland, France, down towards Spain, Portugal. Those areas are forecast to turn quite a lot colder compared to what we've got in, uh, in week three. It's still a bit warmer than average across northern parts of Scandinavia and that warmth also stretches up towards Iceland as well and then these eastern parts of Europe just close to average temperatures but it does hint at still being a bit warmer than average down in the southeastern part of Europe. Uh, precipitation looks like that. It looks drier than average for the north and for the west. So I think what's going on here is that the ridge that's dominating across central parts of Europe through the middle part of November bringing a lot of uh, mild weather through the middle part of November. That ridge, I think, is moving up to Scandinavia. I have a feeling the ridge is going up to Scandinavia. Shame we can't see us mean sea level pressure anomaly here, but I think if we could, we would find high pressure is becoming centred around here somewhere. And that, of course, with high pressure up over Scandinavia, where it is drier than average, that is going to push winds from those sort of southeasters, which are quite mild in the middle of November, into northeasterly or easterly to north easterly as we get into the second half of November. That will be a lot colder. So that's the reason I think the temperature normally is falling significantly in week four, but it's still pretty dry. I think the ridge from Central Europe in the middle of November is pushing north to Scandinavia. So just hints there, but things turn a lot colder, I reckon, in the second half of November High pressure becomes centred over Scandinavia and probably to the north of Scotland. Turns the winds into the east. Still dry because cold air will always be drier than mild air uh, at this time of the year because cold air holds less uh, moisture than uh, sort of mild Atlantic air. So still dry, but of course any precipitation at did fall would probably be falling as uh, snow, especially across northern parts of Europe, Scandinavia, northern Germany, those areas, Denmark, northern Poland, likely to have any precipitation that is falling at this point to be snow. Down in the uh, Mediterranean, it looks still rather unsettled through the central part of the Med, not as wet as, as not as wet as it is in week one. A little bit more unsettled down towards the southeast as well, around Greece, it looks like turning rather more unsettled there. Spain and Portugal have sort of average uh, type precipitation, and many of these eastern parts of Europe over towards the Black Sea uh, have average precipitation as well. So that's your 30-day uh, uh, look ahead uh, for Europe and for the UK too. And quite interesting. So we're starting off pretty cold in the west of Europe. Um, much, much more than average over in the eastern part of Europe. Looks like the middle part of November is dominated by high pressure and brings a lot of dry and fairly mild conditions. Bear in mind there could be frost and fog through that middle part of November, which would be... It won't be anywhere near as mild as the model is suggesting, but technically it's a mild ridge. Um, and then as we go into the second half of uh, November, just so since it's a long way out, it's week four, but just the hints that we push the high pressure to Scandinavia, that drags the wind into the east. We see quite a big cool down from week three to week four across many sort of northern and western parts of Europe as those winds turn into the east. Could that be true winter being unleashed in the second half of November? 
Uh, well, we'll find out a little bit more next week because next week we'll be covering the rest of November. I think we just about get to the start of December, actually, uh, with next week's update. So that could be quite an interesting one. See whether there's any further hints of that high pressure getting itself up to Scandinavia in the second half of the month. Right, so that's your 30-day look ahead uh, for this week. Uh, coming up later on this afternoon, we're going to have the um, weather for the next week to 10 days in detail on the homepage. So come back for that. Uh, but at 15 minutes, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.